After all the years of uh, doing the woodworking and running the companies I did, in 2021, I was going to quit my job and take off in my van and see the United States. Well, if I had a name for my van, I'd probably call it Destiny, only because in my whole life and all my experience led up to this destiny. And the destiny was after I had just the inside, nothing on top but a solar panel, I had the opportunity to get on the ground floor of a van company, camper van that was starting up called Drifter Vans. I came in on van two, I was the production manager. When I left almost three years later, we were on van 64. I'm retired, I turned it over to a couple of young guys in their 30s. The advantage to that was, is because I'm old school. You know about old people and technology. Well, the young guys, they're into technology. They've been able to take that van company to a whole nother level just based on their youth. Uh, so I served my purpose, handed that football off to them and they're running with it. Stop by and look at Drifter Vans because they do some, it's total custom. If you can dream it, we can build it. And that's the bottom line. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Really excited to be hanging out with Rick today. He came all the way out from Michigan to show us his GMC Savannah van that he fully converted into a luxury RV. And this thing has everything. So join us for the tour. Hi Patrick, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to put my van out there and perhaps inspire other people to build things that they have not even thought of yet. So, I started off this van not knowing, but I did it in the 80s when I worked for boat companies. I've worked for power boat companies, I've worked for sailing yacht companies, I've done upholstery, the interior on half million dollar yachts, but little did I know that would come into play as I got ready for retirement. And I'll start with the outside. I bought a GMC 2500 Savannah. It's got a V8 6.0 liter, and it started off as a U-Haul van, totally bare, nothing in it. And uh, I picked it up with one dream in mind, and that was retirement. And I started off by putting essentially everything on it that you see here from the deck to the OVS awning, to the bug screens, the Yakima EXO trunks on the rear. On the front here, I've got a Hollywood bike rack because I do have an e-bike and I needed something heavy duty. Uh, if you're looking at something like this, you don't get uh, trailer hitches that you can mount on there, but I had this custom made and it worked out beautifully. Uh, for night, I did put on some Weston lights. If you're out there in the wilderness, it's critical that you are able to see dark. Uh, pretty much everything on the outside is what you can see here. Making my way to the inside is where it really takes place. And I did the inside first and then the outside came in the second phase of this build. I guess for starters I'll show you my little flip up table that I put. And it's like the ProMasters, the uh, Fords and the Mercedes, everybody's got a flip up, mine's just scaled down. The wood grain in this van comes from Italy. It's a burl walnut, and it came pre-finished from a company called Tree Frog. It has a polyurethane finish. I also installed Corian countertops, uh, both here and there. The love seat that you see right there is 50 inches. It comes from Wayfair. And also, of course, you can see that I have a 700 watt Kenmore microwave. The fridge is kind of disguising. Uh, first mistake I made was I bought an electric 120-volt uh, college fridge. Lasted about three weeks. Didn't like it. So then I did some more research. 12 volts the way to go. And I bought an Iceco, a JP42 quart. And this turned out to be one of the best investments I've ever made. It uses like 5 amps, 70 uh, watts, and you can run it for days. Inside you can see that it's got two baskets and it holds quite a bit. And I've had this for five years and no problems. So I'm very happy with my investment there. I did have to make some custom cutouts so it would slide in, but that really wasn't too bad. The flooring is a Mohawk and I wouldn't recommend this to everybody, although I'm pleased with it. It's a floating floor, which means it does not glue, it does not stick, it floats. In order to do that, you have to have a quarter inch gap all the way around for swelling and expansion. That's why I put the trim all the way around to hide the gap. In the winter time, it goes just like this, and in the hot weather, it does fan out. So, 
This is my dry storage. I just simply open up this, and this is where all my dry food goes, right in there. Uh, breads, cereals, banana chips, raisins. Uh, this is a little pouch here. This holds my soaps, dish soap, hand soap, garbage bags. I've got paper towel. My toothbrush goes here. Cream, first aid kit, suntan lotion. Base does swivel, and when you have company, that kind of comes in handy. Over here, if I was to show you, I will turn this on, but I don't have the cameras up yet. This is a wireless screen cameras. There's two. It's made by Boyo. It has a 700-foot range, so you can place them outside of your van on a magnetic pole or something magnetic, stick it to it, and all night long you can watch your van. And if you don't like that, you can put this anywhere you like for safety all night long. When you box up, everybody always wonders who's out there. Then you have to peek first to see. Uh, with this system, you don't have to. Totally takes care of that. Uh, these are all my 12-volt uh, outlets. But what you see here is I've got two inverters. I've got one here and one there. There's a 1,500-watt uh, inverter behind here, and that runs the front half of the van. I've got a 2,000 watt in the rear that runs the rear, but I put two of them because if something ever went bad with one, I've already got extensions cords ran behind the walls that I can plug into and operate my whole system off either one that's working and the one that's dead doesn't affect me. I also have a Wii Boost. Uh, the Wii Boost you really can't see, but it's back there. And uh, one of the things that I like about it is I tested it. And you can't always get cell phone service, but you can get a text a lot of times when you can't get anything else. My theory is for $500 of the cost of the Wii Boost, people would say, is it worth it? And I said, is your life worth one text to get out to get you help? Uh, to me, worth every penny. And uh, of course, I have fire extinguishers. I've got one there. I've got one on the, each side door uh, just for safety features. You can look towards the front. That's a wood grain uh, dashboard that I got. I uh, can't remember where I purchased it, but they're out there. And again, I wanted it to be different, and I wanted it to have a little class to it, and that uh, burl uh, grain there kind of matches this. You'll see in the dash uh, window that I have a Vantrue camera. That has Wi-Fi. It also records 24 hours a day. If you get hit in an accident, it automatically locks the screen in the recording. It says front, cabin, and rear. So I'm protected three ways all around my van. Uh, one other thing I'm going to pull out right here. This box contains an Optimus tracking system. I was turned on to this by a friend of mine who already had his vehicle. Well, he had converted a trailer on tracking. You can set this from every 10 seconds to uh, every 10 minutes to track your vehicle. Uh, it's battery charged. It lasts about a month. I set mine on every 10 seconds. It tracks your latitude, your speed, tells you what your battery charge is in here. And uh, you can also set it to where if you're going one mile an hour over the speed limit, it will send you an alert. Therefore, creating you from wasting your money on out-of-state tickets. All right, so the Optimus program, an app that it comes with, starts off looking like this. You can switch the screen to go into earth view. So now it's an earth view. It allows you, it tracks every day and every stop and start that you use. And I'll type into this. I'll go into my detailed history. I'll track today. I had a two hour drive in. This was the start of my trip. And as you can see right there, that solid blue line was my trip all the way here. What's nice is when you blow this up, and you break it down, you're going to see individual blue arrows. You click on that, it will tell you exactly where I was, the speed, the time. It's, it's great. It truly prevents you from getting a ticket that you didn't deserve. And if your vehicle ever gets stolen, it will send you an alert that your vehicle's moving, and you, as you're calling 911, you can tell them exactly where your vehicle's at to get it back closer. All around, one of the greatest things I've purchased for this van. So when you come in here, again, I wanted something to make my life cozy and more like home on the road. That's an electric fireplace. It has 1,500 uh, 
uh, watt of heating power, although I do not use it. Uh, I don't intend on being in a cold enough environment to use it. Uh, it uses hardly no power just running the LED lights. Uh, so that, that was simple. I also installed uh, walnut uh, hooks for towels and hats and things of that nature. The ceiling is a fox leather and I run it on the side of the walls. There's one inch of uh, padding underneath there. And what I did, uh, running companies my whole life, I just made me a detailed person. I've saved all the products that I used to build the van. For instance, you'll see that this product was used in the walls. And then the half inch uh, multi-layered apple core was used in the floor. And the three quarter was used on all my cabinets. I've got the Corian sample that I used. This is the fox leather for the walls and the ceiling. This is an ostrich that I used in some of the trim work in the bedroom. And then also, you'll see it on my sliding door. And I just took that and skinned the plastic that came with the original door. And that was very easy to do. So, moving on from there, you'll notice that I have a vanity and a sink. Underneath my sink, I have a two and a half gallon water tank. And this was pretty simple to install, two and a half gallons. So I fill that up with fresh water. I've got a filter on it and I've got a sure flow pump right here, okay? Now, this hose runs behind the back wall up into this spigot, which is located right here. Now, you'll notice, and you shouldn't do this technically, water should never be around electricity, so I wouldn't advise it. I'm confident in what I've done, so I'm okay with it. But I've got a complete Renogy system. I've got a 50 amp DC to DC charger here. And so that charges when the car is running or off solar power. This was the first system I had set up. I started off with just a solar panel and a, uh, a shunt system. This connects to the battery to tell you what your uh, everything is, your how charged you are, how many amps and watts you're using. Uh, over time, I upgraded, and I upgraded from four uh, gel batteries made by Renogy to, or I'm sorry, three, to three 100 amp hour batteries that are uh, self-heated, computerized, uh, great batteries in the winter. They shut down uh, before they allow you to start using any of your products. They heat up to a temperature so where you won't ruin them like I did my other batteries. So. Uh, big cost expense, but well worth it. This monitor here connects to the batteries themselves. It plugs in because it's a smart system. So I got two ways, and you'll see that they're 13.8 here, 13.8 here. Uh, so both systems, no matter how you look at them, uh, seem to operate right on the button when they measure the, uh, the watts and the amps and the life of the battery. What you see right here is a little breaker switch we added. Uh, this was the electrician at work's idea. Great idea, Garrett. Thanks, bud. But you click that off, it kills your solar power. And what that does is it allows you to charge your system quicker by when you start the car, all 50 amps can go directly to your uh, charging system. Otherwise, it's always a split 25-25 no matter what you do. So that was a big benefit. Uh, these switches right here, okay? This one is for the water that comes out here, makes the pump. You can hit right here and you'll see it's the, not much water in the tanks but it does have some in it that did start to drip out. Uh, the reason I did that is because when I'm washing my face, you can't always see where the switch is at and fumbling around, but something this large is not hard to miss. Uh, this switch right here goes to another set of lights I have on the uh, over the slider and on the other side at night. So if somebody comes around, rather than again, once peeking with that system, you can light up the world and not have to peek out your windows. Underneath this, I've got two drawers. They're full of clothes. Uh, that's where I store everything that, you know, shirts, socks, underwear, things of that nature. I do have a JBL stereo system uh, in the rear and up front. Uh, what I like about the system now that I didn't think about was the television. I can Bluetooth through the stereo system and have surround sound on my TV. This is a 20 inch TV, smart TV. Uh, I, I have a Samsung phone which has Samsung TV. I have Amazon Prime which I've got Amazon Prime. I lack for nothing in the channels. Another advantage of this TV other than it going this way 
is I built it to swivel out the back door in case there was a number of people gathered around. For some odd reason, somebody wanted to watch something, a group of us could. I also put in a Max Air fan right above the bed. It's common in a lot of people's uh, builds to do that, and it does come in handy at night. It blows that wind right on you. Uh, I've got one little upper cabinet, and uh, it comes in handy as well. That's where I keep my electric blankets. I like to joke people and tell them that I have heated floors. When you don't have, the only heat that I use in this is a Mr. Buddy system. It's a single cylinder, you screw it on and it works great. Heats up in no time at all. But the floors always get cold because there's nothing in between that and the bottom of the metal. So what I've done is I purchased two 12 volt electric uh, blankets. I put one on the floor, plug it in. I plug the other one on top of me when it's really cold. It raises this anywhere from 10 degrees to 15 degrees above the outside temperature. The reason I know that is because being the kind of personality that I am, I've got a temperature checker. So I love to check what the outside is versus the inside to get a gauge on how I need to approach the sunshine. Uh, a tip that I've learned was if it's really hot outside, put the nose of your van into the sun. That way the sides do not get heat all day long and it keeps it cooler at night. If it's cold and you want it to be warm, I spend half a day with the sun shining on one side, turn it around and let the sun shine on the other. And then at night, it does, takes till about two in the morning before the van gets cool. Uh, seems to work out pretty well. This is the last drawer that I have in here. And this holds my pants, shirts, and a few other things. It's uh, probably about 22 inches deep. Uh, the reason I didn't have it go all the way underneath the bed is because I did need some for the electrical, which I'll be able to show you here shortly. Uh, it is all maple, three-quarter inch, uh, inside and out. Uh, one thing, you know, a lot of people will just use sometimes plywood in their build, but I wanted it to match the decor of what I was trying to accomplish. Now the bed, the bed is a 13-inch mattress, uh, Serta. It's off memory foam, uh, cooling distribution, and it's 72 inches, which is the size of a full-size twin. And if I'm not mistaken, a twin is 36 inches, this is 37 inches, so I do have it by one inch bigger. It doesn't look like it, but when you take the pillows back and you go port to starboard, you will literally be able to get your full 72 inches. I bet you're wondering where the toilet is in my van, because I do have one. It's a uh, Thedford porta potty and it's in one of my black containers out there. And uh, had it for five years. Honestly, I've never used it once, but in some places that you camp, it's required. The Badlands, for instance. If you go out to the Badlands and the uh, warden stops by, you must show that you have a toilet to go in. Against the law to go out. And so, very important. Don't use it, but it's a must have. I guess the, why I'm here, I'll show you too. Uh, these bug screens, I had custom made. You can't get them for GMC, Savannah, they just don't make them because of this track. On the Ford Promaster, everything is in the right spot where you can just put them right in the rubber. I had to avoid the rubber and put it behind with 3M tape to stick so it didn't get in the track. These are my two tubs. I had a stowaway at first. If you look up stowaway, they're a big plastic container, about 12 and a half cubic yards to uh, 13, I think it was, cubic feet. Uh, these are 10 each. Uh, very happy with these because I'm not digging down through one big box to get to everything. I got two choices now. It's on a swing open. I literally just come back here, unscrew this, disconnect the trailer wires, pull this, and it swings right out. The only disadvantage to this unit, and like the other one as well, is it doesn't allow the door to swing open. You can see how it swings back. So I just solved that by simply putting this strap around there like that, swinging it open to here. So we can hold this just like that, wrap it around, that stays open. All right, so I guess the first thing you'll notice is I finished the back doors as well. A uh, little window ledge comes in handy at night. I can put my cell phone on, things like that, quick for reach. Install a little shower. Uh, I don't really use it for a shower curtain, but I do use it for rags and things of that nature. Uh, I have a shower, which I'll show you at the end of this build. And I shower right out the back door. As you can see, the TV, when you prop things out of the way, comes right out here, and now that's viewable. 
And again, you can see I have a rear screen here. It was also custom made by our seamstress uh, at Drifter. God bless her. Uh, you can't live without bug screens in the wilderness. So this was a, uh, a TV swing out arm. I simply mounted it to the wall and I swing it out here and this is where my shower rests. Uh, I've got two tanks here. Uh, one is a 10, one is an 8 gallon, a total of 18. And I've got a uh, 4 pound uh, Worthington uh, propane tank that apparates the heat. I've got clamps down here uh, that keep it in place, the tank, along with two hooks down here that also keep it from moving around. Self closing slides, it opens up, and this is uh, spun aluminum. The reason I chose spun aluminum was because uh, my own personal opinion is plastic, if you leave the water in it, can get slimy, uh, can build up algae, algae and uh, spun aluminum clean. Uh, doesn't rust, doesn't allow slime to build up. When I ordered them, it came with a blue and a red. It doesn't really indicate that it's hot and cold because they both have cold water all the time. And so moving underneath here, you can see I've got an additional 2000 watt inverter. Uh, I had originally bought a pure sign and uh, it was a 3000 watt inverter and it burned like seven amps sitting still just on. So I got rid of it because that's a lot of amps to run full time. Uh, with both of this Energizer 15, 1500 up front, 2000 here, I'm not even burning two and a half amps. So you can leave that on all the time and not kill yourself. This is my gray tank. It's the exact same size as the fresh water under the sink, so you can never overfill it. When you run out of water, this is full. Behind that is what you can't see, but I do have the three 100 amp hour Renergy self-heating smart lithium batteries. Uh, they're all tight back there, and uh, they've worked out well. Can't, can't not recommend them enough. They're, they, the Renergy system has done me well. Everybody's got their preference. Moving up on top, I'll shut this like that. And uh, that can stay, actually. What's nice about this is I can leave this door open, step up here. I've got a ladder to get up to the top of my van. Uh, when you film, you'll see that I've got a 175 watt solar system Renergy panel on here that flips either way. I wanted the uh, ability to capture as much sun as I could uh, throughout the day, so I, I bought their uh, mounts that you can went up and down. All right, I'm going to open up the awning, so I have to move around to the front to do that. After I get the awning open, I'll come to the other side and open up my shower tent so you can see how that works. So one thing these foot rails help me out with, and again, I'm 5'5", five five, so you, everything you see when I'm inside that van, you're basing that on that, not six foot. I've got to bend over. Uh, six foot people got to bend over. But that's to be expected in something that's not a stand up. So that's as far as I can get. So now I'm gonna move on top. I have to get my two straps ready. Yeah, this ladder holds like uh, almost 400 pounds. The only thing is you can't, obviously you can't touch that when you come up. And I try to put a foot on those ribs and it's pretty sturdy. So, I have to come over on this side, kind of reach over. If I had to do this over again, I would have scooted this down six inches so I could put a knee down. That was an afterthought. But for now, it stays right where it's at. My goal eventually is to switch this out and get a, a flat one that you can walk on solar panel because that will give me so much more space on my deck. So these came with the awning. Again, it's an OVS and I've been very happy with their product. I've had it since 21. Uh, and I was, again, everything you see up on top is because I started working for a van company. I was perfectly content until I got to see what everybody else was doing. And one thing led to another and I couldn't stop. So these have two straps, pull them right there. They have a hook right here. Put that in like that. Come over to this side. 
latch it in like that and draw it tight. Repeat the process on this side. This side's a little bit trickier because I can't really pull it out like that. So I push it kind of, walk it over. And the deck holds 485 pounds is what the restriction says that it's worth. And uh, I think it's 88 square feet of coverage. So now my shower curtain, and again, uh, we have put the toilet in here once, just once for my wife to use this. And that was the one and only time. Now what I've found is if you take wax and wax all of your zippers, they tend to open a lot easier. Now, I like the OVS shower, but there's a lot that goes into it when you try to wrap it up. You simply pull that out like that, like that, lock it, lock it there, hop down and stake it. All right, so now I'm gonna hop down, we'll get the shower out, show you how to hook that up. All right, so I'm gonna get into this box and I'll show you some of the features that are on that in order to show you how to get to the shower. What I like about this is it's a double lock. This swings all the way around so you have easier access to your other unit. Now, one thing you can do, I got lucky on this. I bought all these separately. I bought these two boxes from one company, this upper part from another, this from another. I saved over $600 by doing that. If you don't want to do that and you want all these key to like, you got to order it so all the keys come matched. $600 was more of a savings for me than worried about all the keys matching. Now you unscrew this one. This helps keep it tight as well. And again, I wrenched on everything. I just got back from a 13,000 mile trip around the United States. If you get one of these, I recommend lock tight everything. These screws right here came loose. This screw came loose. Uh, the other ones, highly recommend lock tight. So now you can see how this just swings just like this. And so now you can have access to either one. And when I'm out in the wilderness, I use this actually as a tabletop. I can do my cooking on top of this uh, and basically everything else. All right, now what I didn't mention is about cooking. Uh, I do cook, but I do not have other than the microwave, I don't cook inside. If it's raining out, I'll make some pancakes, stuff that won't splatter and produce an odor that'll kind of hang in the van. So in here is where I have my Joe Cool shower. I also have all my cooking utensils. I've got a big Coleman dual stove with the fancy thing, blah, blah, blah. I ended up just going with two of these and then two frying pans. And for me being single, it just meets all my needs. Uh, it's quick, easy, and efficient. Uh, I always carry tools, extra electrical parts, and a sleeping bag and an air mattress because I have spent the night on top of that deck underneath the stars many, many times. All right, so this takes less than five minutes to set up, and I highly recommend this to anyone out there who likes a hot shower. It's a game changer. All right, so you heard me mention I open this up first take this little holder out. First thing I do is take the shower out. And then this rests right on there like that. Mind you, this was a simply a TV swing out arm that just worked out perfect. Okay. So that's that. The next thing you do is you start going through hoses. I can use blue for hot, but I'll hook it up the easy way for now, the way it should be. This is your long shower hose, so you can walk over to the shower tent, walk out this way, take a shower. But there's little clips underneath here. 
and that just locks on there like that. This is the shower head. It's a nice shower head. It's got an on and off switch, uh, rotates, and it's magnetic. You can literally stick it right to the side and it holds on for you. It's battery ignited, so in other words, this container holds the batteries. There's a little holder right here. You'll hear it locked into place. This is the pump. The pump always has an arrow saying which way the water comes in and goes out. Hook up this one and you'll hear that click in. I also like to connect the other one at the same time. This side I know because of the arrow goes to the tank. This attaches. Undo my hooks, my strap. Pull this out. And I used to just take solar showers. So the minute I stepped up into this, this was the big leagues. It's also thermostatically controlled. You set the digital thermostat to whatever temperature you like. So this, I just added some Velcro. It rests on top. Sticks right there. This is a secondary holder. All right, now she's good to go. There's an on and off switch right there. There's also a 12 volt wire that goes to it that I have to my 12 volt system in the back. That's ready to go. This connects to the cold water coming in, comes out to the shower. One last thing is my, my gas. So this screws on. That's the only thing I use this propane tank for is this shower. I was out three months and I've still got a ton in there and that's taking a shower every other day, basically. So it doesn't take much. This connects to the gas line underneath here. So this system's ready to go. So normally I don't have any water in the tank, but what would happen is you hit this switch, the power, once it senses the water's going from the pump, ignites the water, instantly heats it so you waste nothing. And you shut it off. This digital thermostat right here, you can set the temperature to whatever you like it. So once you get used to it, you already know what you should start off on. This is the amount of water pressure, and this is how hot that everything makes it. And you can see that if you were to come over to here and unzip this tent, there's more than enough cord to get inside it. Uh, this tent did not come facing this way. This was actually reversed. The door went in the rear. And I thought, well, that's kind of dumb. If I'm taking a shower, I like to look out. So at least I can take a shower and stare out this way. And it's just taking all these down and reversing it. Well, Patrick, I think that pretty much concludes my tour of my GMC Savannah. Uh, once again, I'm happy to show everybody out there. And if people can draw off that, I'm very happy because I drew off a lot of people before I started building this. Rick, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome creation. Thanks for coming out and doing a road trip all the way from Michigan to New Jersey. Hopefully you're going to have fun while you're out here on the Jersey Shore. There's nothing like the Jersey Shore in the summer. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about like time frame, how long it took to build this, budget, why you went with the... Uh, uh, this version of van versus a Sprinter, a Transit, or a Promaster? Yeah, uh, several reasons guided me in this direction. First, I, I was torn between wanting to get a truck and tow a trailer or something that I can just pick up and go in. Uh, most of my life, I've just stayed in tents. I've lived in a tent for four months. I've just, but, you know, travel the whole U.S. living in a tent. But you have to roll that up every day. You have to pack everything away. If it's wet, it takes time. Camper van became the greatest idea because it was self-contained. I pull in, I pull out. Uh, for this particular van, because I have to keep track of stats for the jobs that I've done, from the time I bought it bare to the time I totally built it, everything and everything, 324 labor hours. The van itself in 2019 was one years old. It had 4,000 miles on it, and I paid $24,000 for that. 
every single thing that you've seen on tour today was an additional 28,000. So empty van 24, finished 28. During that time, you would think that, okay, I'm finished and I've stopped. Well, you're not. Uh, it's my second couch and second uh, three sets of batteries that I've done. I've upgraded the solar system. Uh, safely, I can say that I believe I'm done. I won't commit to it. There's always someone on the next video that's got something that I like. But I think I'm pretty much good where we're at. I'm comfortable. And uh, the shower is nice that you have one and you're able to use it. Uh, do you think back now, like maybe would it be easier to have an indoor shower or would that take up too much space? Yeah, you know, in the, in the, in the taller vans, everybody's installing their showers and I did in the 64 uh, Drifter. And this it would almost be impossible. There's not enough space to put that. And quite frankly, on that uh, three month trip I just took, I took outdoor showers staring at some of the most beautiful places on earth. The canyons, the desert, the ocean, all is my backdrop. I got back to take care of my mom and her apartment and I'm standing in this little shower wall. And I'll take the great outdoors taking a shower at beauty any day of the week. And some people don't realize like getting into this, they, they have visions and dreams of like the nomadic lifestyle and travel in the country. Camping is work. No matter what you do when you're out in your van, it, it takes longer than it would at home. But the rewards of being able to go in all these beautiful places and having the freedom of the road, I think it's worth it. Everything I do in my Airstream camper van takes so much longer. Just brushing my teeth, using the toilet and shower takes longer. But I think the reward is, is uh, worth it. I now, agree. Now, you said uh, you can't fit all that in, a, in this version of the van, which is this is the GMC Savannah and the Chevy Express, or the same exact van. Yep. Why not a Transit or a Sprinter or a Promaster? Well, heading into retirement, for me, it was an economic factor. Uh, at 24 grand for this versus 40 to 50,000 uh, on up for a uh, ProMaster or a Transit. Of course, you get in the Mercedes and that's just 100 grand. Uh, so first and foremost, for the price it would have cost me just to get a ProMaster or a Transit, I just built this entire van. Uh, what turned out to be benefits for me is one, I'm not a tall person. Secondly, I spend most of my time outdoors and uh, third is I can still get into a parking garage and I can still get through McDonald's and all the fast food places and low branches. Uh, if you're out in the wilderness, I don't know how some of the people do it when they stick lights even taller in the rack uh, and you're going under branches like that. Sooner or later, you're going to take a take a serious hit. And we talked off camera. Uh, this van is beneficial because it's less expensive to work on and maintain and you get decent fuel economy, about 14 miles a gallon. Uh, on 13,280 miles, I average 15.7 miles a gallon. That's not bad. I mean, it's what ProMasters are getting. Yep. And another thing is that you did a little bit differently. You were able to register and title this as an RV and get RV insurance? I got lucky. Uh, my From Michigan, the insurance company, which I use State Farm, recognized this as an RV. Uh, you do have to meet uh, five minimum factors. I believe it was out of six. Uh, toilet is one, so that's essential. Even if you don't use it, you must have a toilet. Uh, water, heating, uh, separate kind of bedroom. So yes, uh, and it saved me a lot. It went from just full coverage on this van, which was about 30000 to now they appraised it at 72000 So I would have lost out tremendously had I not gotten that coverage. So if this van got stolen, which it's not because you got that tracker, but if a tree fell on it and it got totaled, you, there's an insurance value now to it. Correct. This is just the basic van. Just my receipts that say, hey, I've got 50 some thousand into it. Yeah, they that, don't that's care. That's a very important step, and I'm sure every state doesn't allow that, right? Every state has different rules. They and are. It's very hard states. to get something certified, classified as an RV that you built yourself in some states. Now, did you submit pictures to them, or did you I have went, to go over there and have it inspected? Yep, I sure did. I, well, I, I took, uh, first of all, they wanted all my receipts. Fortunately, the detail person in me had it all broke down on paper. Uh, then they wanted to inspect it themselves and take pictures. So I took it as you just saw it today, along with all my receipts. They sent the photos and all copies of my receipts off, did a calculated process, and came up with the 72. And one last thing, how did you come up with this four plan? Did you just That's a good question. Or, like, what was the process? Well, for me, I started off 
making this in cardboard. When you're dealing with a low roof, unlike the Transits, the higher models, you have lots of room to work with. I knew what my dimensions were for the fridge, the fireplace, and the microwave. And barring that being said, I only had a half inch clearance, so I had to literally cut out foam. Uh, so making it out of cardboard was the best way to do it because then I could literally replace it with wood and make it work. So that's a sink made out of cardboard. This was my fireplace made out of cardboard and my couch. This is my mock-up couch and countertop fireplace. I love the Sharpie marker flames there. Yeah, yeah, you had to have a visual. And then that was the picture that came out there before. And you can see I had another couch in there at that point. Uh, this was a full phase one here. So basically, I'll slide these out of the way. You can look at how I had the fridge wrote, the fireplace, the couch, the bed with two drawers, and things changed as I started to get to build it. You can see where I took those parts, converted it into wood, and then you can see there what the end product looked like at that time. So here's a picture from the bed all cardboard. I mean, I used to sit in this van for hours in cardboard, just looking at the internet, taking dimensions. Uh, so everything was made out of cardboard, and then you pretty much just trace it onto wood, and it's easy to cut out. If you're not a true woodworker, I'd recommend this to anybody, because if you get it all mocked out in cardboard, disassemble it, put it on wood, you can't go wrong. You just, it's like a woman sewing with sewing patterns. That's a great tip. I know, you know George from Humble Road, which is literally a mile from here, does the cardboard mock up. He brings his customers back to the shop so they could stay in it part of the day and just see what it's like, see what they want to change. Very, very, very critical. Smart room. Because once you've got something to visualize, <clears throat> then you start making changes. Well, this is awesome. Your van reminds me a lot of Les's van. If, uh, uh, Long-term viewers are watching this video. Les, I met in Watkins Glen. He had a bright red Chevy Express. He was a retired union electrician, and he built out a Chevy Express for him and his wife to travel the country. Did an unbelievable job. Everybody loved that video. Got a lot of views. Unfortunately, Les is no longer with us, uh, So, uh, but he got several good years of travel with him and his wife in the van. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to showcase your beautiful build and all your ideas and creation and trial. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you tried stuff, it didn't work, you updated it. That's gonna be very helpful for someone that wants to build their own van. And I, I really appreciate this tour today. Yeah, my pleasure. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us for this detailed video and I'll see you next time.